Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Uh, welcome back to Hive Swap Friend Sim. Last time we did the Bratwurst Path, now we're doing this one. You stumble through the streets of a strange alien world. Ever since you crash landed on this hostile planet, you have been desperate. Desperate for information, provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. Along the way, you've had some last embarrassing missteps, oh yeah. Maybe even an encounter with alien meat products? You don't really want to get into it. What you do want to get into is friendship. Entire planet of an endless friend opportunities awaits you. Honestly, at this point, you make friends with one of those weird purple bushes. You're not picky. Wait, you see someone in the distance. Or perhaps someone? You see, uh... Kurava Hermod. Or Amzia... Erdhen. Well, let's go with Amzia, because she's on the left, and the Americans read left to right. Lo, what light through weirdly organic, yonder weirdly organic architecture breaks. A small figure approaches. Oh, fuck, I have to think of a voice. Oh. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's a perfect voice. Um, I'm already worried by this. Because these are all blood colors. That's Tavros blood, or um, Burgundy, I think. Rust blood. That's, uh, that's mutant blood or rust blood. Uh, green tear. That might be her blood, or maybe ex Executioner blood. And that's Teal, that's a Judgment blood. Um, I know that her thing makes her look like a painter, but a lot of people actually make paints out of the blood of trolls. That's what Nepeta does in a uh, Homestuck comic. Oh my gosh, you are so... So far you've swallowed quite a few insults in regard to your looks and intelligence levels. You aren't really the type of that shallow opinions get of others get you down, but it's been kind of a rough day, you brace yourself. Cute! Oh, I'm cute. Oh, oh. She gives you a sweet, sincere smile. Oh, look at her. Look at her big glasses. I love big, dorky yellow uh, yellow eyes and big, dorky round glasses. I love that shit. I've never seen anything like you. She doubles her U's. I wonder why. She's giving me all sorts of new ideas. Boy, do you hope some of those ideas are about friendship. Now you get a taste of it, you're hungry for more. Take a stumbling step forward and your ribs remind you, although the potential of camaraderie is enough to improve your mental health, it can't cure acute injuries. Oh. You don't look so good. Come inside. I've been looking for new contributors. Contributors? Could that mean friendship contributors? No, that's dumb. Maybe you should run some sort of alien newspaper once you're on staff. Looks a little young for that, but what the heck do you know about alien management hierarchy? You follow her to a nearby building. And now that you're looking up from your ravenous hunt for companionship, you notice you've wandered into kind of an upscale part of town. That would make sense considering her high tier blood. A lot less garbage than people collapsed in the street. See one of those spiky robot things, but it's washing a window instead of shooting a laser at a group of children. If that's not high class, you don't know what is. Yeah, that would make sense considering that, um, she appears to be even higher blood tier than our data was. Before you can follow her inside, she turns around the threshold, blocking your way. Real quick. You don't have to be an artist. Do you? Artist here, as a matter of fact. Um, I'm gonna, so I actually do, I drew the thumbnail for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Because I don't think she's talking about the same kind of work here. No, never had much of a knack for it. Oh good. Friendship between artists can be so fraught. Much better to keep things between artists and art appreciators. That way no one can get jealous. Your smile widens even further and you feel an unbelievable rush of joy. Have you finally found someone who isn't a total fucking maniac? No. Try a friendship without having to mention it at all. Puts a spring in your step. Or as uh, much of a spring as possible to your broken arm and misaligned torso. MZ leads you into an elevator with buttons labeled in spiky letters that make no sense. You realize that nothing is ever going to make sense to you again. That's okay. Your hierarchy of needs is adjusted recently. Your new friend, you're jumping the gun with his descriptor, but you're feeling seriously good about this encounter, stands in the corner of the elevator, wringing her claws. I wish I'd known I was going to have company. I would have cleaned up a little. It's been a while since I met anyone new. You sure that whatever disaster house is can't be worse than some other places you've seen here? Although you kind of get what she means. She's wearing an artist's smock that's covered in splashes of paint. No, she isn't. That's blood. That's troll blood. Doesn't really look like paint. But it couldn't be anything else, could it? It's every color of the rainbow. Oh, Jesus. Door slides open, and you step into a space that you're relieved to find is totally recognizable. 
Table overflows with palatine brushes, cloudy jars of water, and sponges. Several easels stand beside the window to catch the light of two moons. Number of canvases lean against the wall. Turn so you can't see what's on them. Oh yeah, so um, Alternia, the, the planet that we're on, actually does not have um, a sun that is survivable for most beings. So everything happens at night in the light of two different moons. The sun will uh, hurt people who are on it. The character Terezi is blind in the comic because of the sun. She looked into the sun and uh, fucked her eyes up. Um, and vampires on this world are known for being able to exist in sunlight. First things first. Amzia brings you over to a wall screen that looks way more high-tech than anything on your now defunct spaceship, tapping away at a series of unreadable symbols. She indicates you should take off your sling. Here. Oh, so the last one is canon, I guess. Go ahead and stick it in there. Uh-huh. She seems to want you to put your injured arm in a large hole in the wall, which you do, because you're sure your best friend is in your interested heart. Hole shrinks down like a blood pressure cuff, sending bolts of agony through you. Oh, God. Is this going to be like that scene with the cat lady? You want to yank your arm back, but you don't. Even if it's broken, you like having it attached to you. Instead, you shout a lot and thrash your other limbs around. Calm down, you big wriggler. Oh, yeah, wrigglers are what um the babies are called, grubs are called. It's like you've never seen a medicalizer before. Oh, that's pleasant. If you don't stop moving, it won't work. Tears spill down your steep, down your cheeks, but you force yourself to sell. You'll bear the pain. You'll do it for your friend. She's looking at you, hopefully. It's so delicate and pretty, almost angelic. You look at her face and tell yourself it's all going to be okay. The hole releases and you pull your arm back out to find it completely healed. You can move your fingers. It doesn't even hurt anymore. Hey, things are looking up. See? I told you. This is great. You're overwhelmed by the urge to celebrate. Let's fucking dance. Try to resist the urge to celebrate. You failed to resist the urge. Um, Take Amzia by your tiny hands and twirl around the studio. Or you try to. You forget about your busted ribs. You sure are doing that a lot. Let go of Amzia and go careening into one of the tables. Thankfully, not the one covered in art supplies. You hit the corner and go down on your already incredibly sore ass. It's what you get for acting like a huge fucking tool in front of your new friend. Are you okay? Was that some sort of ritualistic rite of healing I'd never heard of before? You shrug against the floor. Amzia leans down and pricks you up in a bridal carry. Ooh! Despite the fact she's about half your size. Makes your ribs hurt, but what doesn't nowadays? <laughs> Lays you down on a weird lumpy couch. Are you sure you're okay? You look a little... Turns off to nothing. She's looking at your left arm, which you have draped over yourself awkwardly to try to hold your torso together. <laughs> that color... At first, you think she means the color of your skin, which is different than her light gray. Then you think you mean the truly fantastic buffet of bruises you got going on. But then you realize in your prancing idiocy, you've managed to scrape up the inside of your arm. Blood oozes sluggishly from the wound. Amzia dredges a finger through it. Uh-oh. You're half expecting her to put it in her mouth and for this to become a whole cannibal situation. Well, since you aren't the same species, it wouldn't really be cannibalism, but still, no thanks. Instead, Amzia holds a finger up, the drop of blood trembling on the tip. This color. I've never seen anything like it. Dash to one of her tables, pulling out a sketchbook and dragging her finger down it. Your blood paints a rusty line down the center. She lets out a squeak of excitement. This is amazing. What, red? Not red. It's a million dirty little rusties. God. We never really got to see too much troll racism in the, in, in the actual comic. Rusties swarming all over the city. I'm drowning in red. This is crimson. It's incredible. You must be some sort of mutant. They didn't do her you on the you. See that? You're really lucky I found you instead of one of the drones. Lucky? You. Ha. Ha ha. Yes. Very lucky. The luckiest. Though your arm is healed and you're out of whatever doubtlessly weird weather happens on this planet, maybe Amzi's right. Maybe you are lucky. Close your eyes and try to breathe. Send yourself out. Really send in, center yourself in your own body all that garbage. Ah. You open your eyes and wow, you sure aren't centered anymore. <laughs> In fact, you roll completely to the left. He's trying to get away from Anzia, who's back and standing over you with a gigantic axe. Watch out. She grabs you, drags you onto the couch, and plants her hand on your solar plexus, effectively pinning you down. You'll hurt yourself if you keep flopping around like a beached blubber beast. It's a whale. It's a whale blubber. You want to be friends, don't you? You want to help me with my artistic aspirations, right? You get the feeling she might be trying to manipulate you. Just the tiniest little suspicion. It's possible Amzi has recognized your intense craving for companionship and is trying to exploit it. You don't like being suspicious of your new friend, but that is a pretty big axe. I don't know what's got you so worried. 
I just want to show you my axe. Oh, of course, that makes sense. It is a really nice axe. You hold on your hand for it, but of course it's too heavy and your hands are all sweaty and you fumble it. Fumble the really sharp weapon. Amzia tries to catch it before it's too late and in the really struggle, you both getting cut. Like, very cut across both your wrists. In fact, you don't think she could have aimed even better if she'd been trying. Oh. Oh dear. Hard agree. Don't struggle. <laughs> You'll only hurt yourself more, silly. Don't want to do that, do you? No, you definitely don't want to do that. Not after what a Butterfingers you've proven to be. Amzia gets up to put the axe down and you start to lose track of her for a little while. You're bleeding all over her couch and everything starts to go shiny and unreal. She comes back with a little jar she used to catch your blood. It's a good idea. You sure are making a mess. You wonder if they're specifically blood jars. They look like jam jars. Alien jam. Space jam. God, you love that movie. <laughs> It's been so long since you've seen it. Definitely the best TG movie about basketball. Way better than the one with the dog and the clown. <laughs> Do they even have a basketball here? You ask Amzia. She shrugs and brushes the hair off your forehead. She keeps smiling and saying comforting things. God, she's such a good friend. For long, you do what it's honestly been a goddamn shock you haven't done before now. You pass out. Come two, you're propped up against the wall in a weird way that you wouldn't love even if you weren't an in, in invalid, and both your arms are jammed to the hole in the wall. The med hole, the glory hole of well-being, the magic sphincter. You grunt and pull your arms back out. They're healed. The two cuts on your wrist are just two faded pink lines. Take a step from the wall and immediately hit the ground. You may not be actively dying anymore, but you did lose like half the blood in your body. Gosh, you're tired. A little giggle makes you turn around, or roll over since you're still on the floor and probably not getting up anytime soon. It's fine. You've met worse floors in your life. Amzia is sitting back on one of her easels, her hair pulled back beneath a scarf, and a little round glass is perched on her nose. A jar of blood, your blood, sits next to her, and you watch as she dips a brush in. I'm glad you are awake. I was a little worried I'd actually killed you back there. She laughs, and you laugh along with her. It's very funny. Actually, everything is funny right now. It's probably the blood loss. You ask her what she's painting. You, of course. You inspired me. Huh. Right now, it just looks like a bunch of red squiggles and some lines, but she only just got started. She's warming up. She sits on her stool, looking at her palate and chewing on her lip thoroughly, thoughtfully. She looks nervous. Actually, I want to show you something. Something I've never shown anyone else. <laughs> Are we going to see some bulge? Some tentable, some tentabulge? She leaps up from her stool and crosses the studio. How old are these characters, actually? Because I know that, like, the cast was 13 in Homestuck, but they didn't look it. Rut row. I assume she's 18. I would hope that Hussey would have learned his lesson and be like, Hey, everyone's going to draw a porn on my characters. May as well make them legal. Uh, so really, it's his fault. Uh, she, you roll to the other side to keep her in a line of sight. You hope she isn't getting another Space Jam jar. She starts turning around the canvases one by one. They're all blank except for one, which has a little... Oh, wait, no, there's a shadow. Every single one of them is blank. <laughs> you aren't sure you understand. You ask her if these are all new canvases she hasn't gotten the chance to paint on yet. She sighs. No. I've had them forever. I'm just... Not a real painter. There. I said it. She buries her face in her hands, talking from between her fingers. Oh, she's so cute. I'm really good at all the other parts. The materials in the studio. I even make all my own paints. I just can never do the actual sitting down and doing art part. She looks so despondent. You wish you could do something, but you don't really know that much about art and you can't stand up yet. <laughs> you tell her that it looks like she's moving in the right direction, at least. You don't have a studio or brushes or anything like that. Of course, you have no aspirations to being a painter, but you leave that part out. That's just it. I feel inspired for the first time ever. I think it has to be your messed up, disgusting mutant blood. There's really no other explanation. She takes the knee beside you, picking up one of your limp hands with hers. They're cold, like she's been pressing them to a glass window in winter. Usually I just finish off my contributors quickly. I don't have time to deal with a bunch of injured low bloods moaning around my studio. But I couldn't just use your blood up all at once. You are far too special for that. You gaze at Amzia. A mist has descended over your vision, and it is even the mist of imminent death. I have to keep this precious blood safe. 
I think you might be my muse. <gasps> you will never escape. <laughs> is that a good ending? <laughs> what the? Is this the good ending? <laughs> Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> See, almost everyone has at least two endings, as far as I know. I think some of them have three. Most of them might have three, in fact. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm i really enjoying this game. I really like diving into this weird culture that the trolls have. Because they touch it in, in Homestuck, and, like, you know, it's a whole thing. But, like, oh, I like it. I like this so much. I love this shit. Oh, I love this game. It's a good game. Um, so anyway, yeah, absolutely buy this game. It's on Steam, and it's two dollars a thing. Um, you buy the original one, and then all the other things are technically DLC, but it's just so that they can release stuff episodically. Um, the whole game is really good. This is a very well-made visual novel as well. Um, it's very simple, but that's okay. It wants to be like a little lunch break game. Like I did that one in fifteen minutes. Um, and of course, you can also go back in. But I usually imagine that, like, if I have spent good money on a game, it's worth it. Usually, I want to be like, I want to get um, like one dollar an hour out of my out of my fun there. So like, fucking Kingdom Come Deliverance didn't get my fucking money's worth. But this game, like, I got it on sale, so I'm. Definitely getting my shit out of this. This is a really good game. Um, so I've been Alfred. Um, so I wanted to mention that I don't uh, ask people to like, comment, and subscribe to the end of my video. I wonder if people actually like forget to do that if you don't say it. Meh. This has been Hive Swap Friend Sim. It's available on Steam. It's cheap as hell. Please go support the developer and please play through it in your own way. Uh, in a game like Dark Souls, there's a lot of reason that you'll watch a playthrough and then go play it yourself. But for this, not so much. So I'm wanting to make sure that everyone plays it. Um, definitely, definitely buy this fucking game. It's very good. Uh, see you guys next time. Thank you for coming by to visit. I've been Alfred. Bye.